Welcome back to Bitsby Trip, and this is your host, Carter. Let's get into this. Now, this video is going to be a little off topic relative to the crypto mining and blockchain space that we usually discuss on this channel. This effectively is part two of the BBT Theater build. The team and I are working on the house that I recently purchased. If you're looking for crypto content, no fear. More videos will be released this week covering the post effects of the Ravencoin hard fork and how the network has recovered to a GPU friendly platform again, along with some coverage on deep dive on power analysis of GPUs using the new or GPU power meter that was sent over by one of our viewers. Stay tuned for that. Now let's get into this build and some of the gory details that we're trying to accomplish here. The theater was originally built in 1995 with one upgrade of some of its components in early 2003. This includes a 720p Optimate projector, Yamaha RV2500 receiver, and a set of JBL Control 5 speakers. The wiring was primarily 16 gauge, with a few of the speakers being powered by shielded Romex that's normally used in power or for power. Like, what the hell? That was not all. Many instances of patchwork such as 16 gauge to Cat5 Ethernet was patched together for 12 volt triggers along with extension cords that were cut in half and spliced with older power strips. Needless to say, all of, after all of that discovery, I decided not to risk and leave anything in place. Even the delight screen measuring in at 100 inches was still 4x3 and would not offer the experience I was looking for out of the 18x25 room with the seating of 12. The trick was, how could I build a semi-budget build yet maximize my theater experience? My number one priority was visual. I wanted it to look amazing, crisp, and sharp, like a real movie theater. In all of my research, it seems most individuals build their own theater in what it seems to be putting a lot into the sound system and associated immersion, then end up with a budget projector. I'm looking for a crawl, walk, run strategy on my speaker setup. I want to start with the budget setup and a mid-range receiver, but have a higher-end projector and screen for amazing visuals. Much like building a PC where I can change out the components iteratively. However, the monitor is usually a fixed item. The only way to change that is to spend more for a better monitor. Given the situation where we were having to run the new wire and effectively tear down the existing content, I wanted to perform a test run with the components I have right now. Talking to the BBT crew over the weekend, we spent some time breaking down the existing setup and pre-running some of the lines that we already had ready, like the 35-foot HDMI 2.0 2.2 HDCP line for the projector. This ensures that we have everything that we need, and the team and I decided to use the room next to the theater, which is a 20 by 16, which gives us close enough to the space to identify gaps and make sure everything is working as intended. Once everything was set up, a few issues cropped up while testing the components. First, the Pioneer automatic speaker level adjustment set the speakers to a negative 20 dB level input. This was an issue because when we were trying to play a movie, the receiver had to be turned up near negative 2.5 dB to put out enough sound which seemed way too high given the output of the receiver. I'm putting this one on the acoustics in the room, being effectively a hard vinyl plank flooring with no sound dampening caused some serious echo driving the adjustments way down. Adjusting those back near 0.0 dB returned the signal to produce what I would expect from this Elite receiver. The only other issue that is remaining is with the rear speakers. The Klipsch RM41s were constantly buzzing when setting idle. like there was a bad ground in place. They are hooked up to the Crown XLI 800 powered amplifier using the recommended configuration of the preamp out from the Pioneer Elite receiver. This theater being built with a full 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos configuration, the rear channels of this 9.2 channel receiver require an external amplifier. As we narrow this down, I will bring you the, the fix to the issue. If you like this kind of content, be vocal. Put down in the comments and let me know if you guys would like other content that are DIY type of tasks, as I have tons planned for this house. More than likely, this will fall under my other YouTube channel name, BBT Fam, as to not alienate my current subscriber base on Bitsby Trippin. If you find DIY videos fun and you like to watch them, and I'll try my best to bring you the components, parts, how we did it, and how we reduce the risk or issues in the BBT type of way. There can never be enough how-to videos on the internet and on YouTube, and hopefully the approach I take will help you in your future project. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next one.